One of my goals for this year has been to branch out and print with other 3D printing materials. For the majority of the time that I've been 3D printing, I primarily print with PLA, PETG, with an occasional bit of ABS, as well as some TPU. And there's nothing wrong with these filaments, and to be perfectly honest with you, they've filled just about every need that I've had, but there's a lot of other awesome filaments out there. The reason why I want to print with these materials is really twofold. For starters, I want to grow in my 3D printing knowledge, so that way I can then learn that info and share that info with you guys. And the second is I don't know what the future has in store and I don't know if there's going to be a time and a place or a project where there is just a certain material that I need to print with because the standard stuff like PLA and PTG just don't fit the bill. And at that point, I don't want to have to learn how to print with that filament. I already want to be at least versed in it and have had experience so it's not so difficult to get up and running with these filaments. So far this year, we covered printing with carbon fiber nylon for those tough, rigid parts. We also covered just last month, I believe, how to print with ASA, which is a fantastic material for things that are going to be outdoors or under a lot of UV exposure. And I'm happy to announce before the year ends, we are going to take a look at how to print with another 3D printing material. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at polypropylene. We are going to talk about this material's properties and what makes it unique. We're going to talk about what is required to print with it on the hardware side, as well as on the slicing side. And of course, we are going to do some 3D printing. There's a lot to cover and I hope you guys are excited. Without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting off, let's talk about polypropylene as a material and why you might want to use it. It is a really unique material that contains a lot of really special properties. Commonly used in traditional injection molding, polypropylene is a very tough and flexible material that also has excellent resistance to fatigue. What this means is that the part can bend back and forth over and over again without degrading, and it makes it fantastic for something like a living hinge that's constantly going to be having to open and close over and over again, and you, with a lot of other materials, if you bent it back and forth and back and forth, eventually it would snap or wear down, but polypropylene is great for those kind of applications. Polypropylene also has excellent impact resistance. As far as its thermal properties go, the specific polypro we're using in this video doesn't exactly have the highest heat deflection um, out of the polypros that I've seen, but if you did need to use this material in an application that requires it to be a bit more heat resistant. I have seen some polypropylenes out there that when you print with them, they can operate up to around 100 Celsius. If that is enough reason for you to be excited about this material, it's also resistant to a wide range of chemicals, including water, which will allow this material to be used in a bunch of different applications where maybe other filaments just wouldn't be able to. Now this material's resistance to absorbing water is incredibly nice because if you've printed with nylon or watched my video on how to print with carbon fiber nylon, you know that you have to bake out the filament to remove moisture and it's actually recommended to print in an active heater the entire time so that way during the print, the filament doesn't absorb moisture that actually causes issues while printing. With polypropylene, you don't really have to worry about that because again, it doesn't absorb very much moisture at all. Now, with all of these awesome different features and qualities of this material, there's really no surprise that it is used in a wide range of applications. Everything from the medical industry as well as the automotive industry all use polypropylene quite regularly. Now that we've talked about some of the properties of this filament, let's take a look at what goes into printing it or what's needed on the hardware side. For this video, I'm going to be printing polypropylene on my stock Artillery Genius printer. For the hot end, this material prints at anywhere between 230 to 240 Celsius, which is great news for you because even if you don't have a printer with an all metal hot end, you'll have no problem printing with this filament. As for the extruder, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your 3D printer has at least a decent one. The main reason is that polypropylene as a strand is quite soft, and so if you don't have a printer that can normally print out like a TPU or flexible filament, you're gonna have a really difficult time to consistently extrude this filament. Luckily on the Artillery Genius, it does have kind of like a clone E3D uh, Titan or Aero style hot end, so it is direct drive and it does at least have a pretty narrow filament path, and I had no problems extruding this filament. Really the most difficult aspect of printing with this filament is the adhesion and warping. Out of all the filaments I've ever printed with, this has been the most difficult as far as proper bed adhesion goes. You absolutely need to have a heated bed and the, closest, or the closer your heated bed can get to 100 Celsius, the better off you're gonna be. For bed adhesion, polypropylene doesn't really like to stick to anything but itself, which is a pretty big problem. And it's because of that that we're actually going to use packing tape on top of our build plate to have proper adhesion or to give us at least some adhesion. 
Typically packing tape is polypropylene. It's not always made out of polypropylene, but the stuff I'm using is just 3M's kind of generic packing tape. I can link you guys in the description and I did confirm that that is polypropylene based. Applying this to your bed is quite easy. I do recommend that you give your bed a nice wipe down with either a cloth and some IPA or I use a paper towel and some IPA just to get rid of any residue from previous prints or any dust that might've settled on your bed. Then I just went ahead and laid down the strips one by one. You will wanna lay them down carefully and do your best to kind of follow the strip with your hand to try to prevent any air pockets or air bubbles, kind of similar to if you were applying a cover on your screen, like a phone screen protector. And just again, be careful with this, take your time, go nice and slow. For my build plate, it took like four strips, roughly, I think four and a half strips. And once you're complete, I just went ahead and took a box cutter around the edges and just cut off the excess tape. You don't really have to do that. You could tuck it down, but just to clean things up, that's what I ended up doing. As an alternative, the company that makes this polypropylene smart materials does have their own adhesive stick. And also Magigoo does have a polypropylene stick as well. I haven't used either of these two things, but overall I've heard relatively good things. So that could be something you might wanna try as well. But again, packing tape is something that's commonly used to print with this material. And that's what we're gonna be using in this video. A enclosure might not be a requirement, but I highly recommend it uh, because of the fact that adhesion is such a big deal or the most difficult aspect of printing with this and having any sort of deviation in your environment can really affect that. I highly recommend having an enclosure for this. I'm just gonna be using my hot box from uh, Wham Bam Systems, which just pops up, throw it on top of the machine and I'm ready to rock and roll. And then lastly, as far as your nozzle goes, you don't need any kind of special nozzle. Um, polypropylene, at least pure polypropylene, is not abrasive in any way. So a standard brass nozzle or whatever you've currently got on your machine is gonna be perfect. Now that we've talked about the hardware required to print with this material, let's hop over to Cura and take a look at my slicer settings. I'm gonna be printing with a 0.2 millimeter layer height and an initial layer of 0.24, which is really the standard I print with on any material. For your walls, of course, that's gonna depend on your application, but for me in this instance, I'm just running all these prints with four walls and five top and bottom solid layers. Infill is also one of those things that will depend on what you need, but I'm running my standard 20% infill. As for temperatures, I'm gonna be printing this at 235 Celsius on the hot end and 95 Celsius for the heated bed. Because this material does like to warp and is quite flexible, I'm also gonna print incredibly slow. For my initial layer, as well as all of my walls, I'm leaving the speed at 15 millimeters a second. And for my infill, I'm leaving that speed at 40 millimeters a second. Layer cooling is recommended, and I do have it set to kick on after the fourth layer. I leave it off for those first four layers because again, the first layer is the most tricky part with this filament or the first few layers. And so I leave it off just to make sure that the filament is getting as good of a bond with the build surface as possible. As for adhesion, normally I just use skirts when printing with most of the other filaments, but for polypropylene, I highly recommend using a brim. I would almost say it's a requirement. I stuck with the default brim settings in Cura and I originally did try without a brim because again, I'm not really a fan of brims in most instances, but my parts warped out of control. At least with the brim, it seems to help absorb a bit of that warping and makes it less noticeable on your actual part. So again, one of the unique properties about this filament is that it is really resistant to wear. And so I went ahead, hopped over to Thingiverse and checked out what they had for living hinge models. I found a small little container that's like a three compartment container with a living uh, hinge lid that just pops on top. So I downloaded that into Cura, sliced it and hit print. The first layer started going down and everything looked great. After a couple of layers, I did notice that the print was actually pulling up and it wasn't pulling away from the tape, it was actually the tape that was lifting with the part. So this is why cleaning the bed is really important and making sure you get all those air pockets out. I probably could have spent more time doing it, but the tape did at least hold after it went up a little bit, which did mean that the part warped a bit, but I was still really happy with the end result and it would have warped much worse if I hadn't used this packing tape. I don't think I would have been able to get it to stick, but the packing tape at least did a really good job of holding onto the part and not letting it go. After that was completed, I wanted to print out a little bottling cap. Polypropylene is often actually used for containers or bottles, so I can really see somebody using a 3D printer and polypropylene to do some prototyping before sending off the part to finally be mass produced or injection molded. So I went over to Thingiverse, found a model, went ahead and printed the bottle and then the cap separately. And I was really happy with the end result. It still warped a little bit on the bottom, but much less than on the first print. And 
the part is incredibly strong, like just squeezing it or feeling the bottle or dropping it, it, it feels very strong. The interlayer adhesion is fantastic and the lid is a nice and tight fit. It's, it screws onto the top and screws off and I was really happy with the results that I got out of this. For the final model that I printed, I printed just a hose fitting, which basically had some threads on the top. This was about an eight hour print, and although it's not the biggest print, the reason why it took eight hours is attributed to those 15 millimeters a second first layer and the outer wall and the 40 millimeters a second overall. And I was really, really happy with the way this part turned out. Looking at it, even if someone told me it was printed in like a simple material like PLA, I feel like the quality that it came out with was fantastic. And the main reason I think that it turned out in my opinion, much better than the other models is because the area touching the bed is so much smaller. So it seems like the polypropylene doesn't have any issue, again, adhering to itself. So as it's going up higher and higher and higher, it doesn't have any issues. It's just that first layer. And so because it only needed to attach to the bed in such a small part, it wasn't having as much of an effect with the warping. So the end result to me is a part that looks awesome and I was really happy with the end results uh, of this threaded hose connector. I learned a ton with 3D printing polypropylene and I hope that after watching this video you guys did too. If you follow the steps that I outlined in this video regarding the hardware as well as the slicer settings you will be much better off than going in and printing with this material blind. If I didn't mention it or make it clear in this video, this is a very difficult filament to print with. I certainly don't recommend it to someone that's just getting into 3D printing or that hasn't mastered some of the more simpler materials like PLA or PTG. You really wanna make sure that you're comfortable with your machine as well as your um, kind of bed at leveling and just basic slicer knowledge before jumping into something like this. But once you are done with that, and if you do need to print with polypropylene, again, following the things I've outlined in this video will help you substantially. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments down below, or if you have printed with polypropylene and you think that you've got some tips or recommendations that maybe I didn't cover, let us know in the comments down below. Sharing is definitely how we all learn what works for you or what doesn't work for you. So I love, and I'm sure everyone else would love to hear as well, if you have printed with this filament, what seems to work best for you and what's your setup looking like. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And we are literally just three weeks away from me actually sticking to that and making a video for every single Saturday of this entire year. And it's really all thanks to you guys, the support on this channel and the growth and everything has been so uh, great. You guys have been absolutely amazing and it's been getting me so pumped every single week and keeps me motivated to keep making more videos. And I've been having a blast. I've learned a ton this year and I hope that you guys have as well. Um, as always, if you do want to support the channel furthermore, there will be links down below to my Patreon where you can do so. There's some really awesome rewards. I do want to say a huge thank you because I've gotten quite a few uh, additional Patreon supporters over the last weeks or month or so here. You guys rock. It really helps me out by allowing me to spend more time making videos, which I love doing. And on that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I really hope to see you guys in my next video. And on that note, I'm out. Peace, guys.